The next addition reaction here is called dihydroxylation. We're going to add a hydroxyl group to both sides of the alkene. So since we're adding two of the same thing, we uh, have no regioselectivity to talk about. They both get an OH. Uh, in this case, it turns out we can do this both in syn and anti fashion. We're going to start with anti dihydroxylation. So it's an anti addition. That's the stereospecificity, as you might guess. The fact that it's an, uh, the stereospecificity is anti here uh, is because it goes through a three membered ring intermediate. Now, one thing to note you can technically use any what's called peroxy acid or per acid for short. There's the generic formula, and we're going to use one of those in the mechanism here. But hands down, the most common. Uh, peroxy acid you'll see is what's called metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, MCPBA. I like to think it's a Canadian who likes peanut butter. So, me crave peanut butter, A. Eh? So, my stupid little joke. But hopefully, it helps you remember that MCPBA is a per acid, and we're going to be using it here. So, you can kind of see that per acid structure. It looks like a carboxylic acid with an extra oxygen. There's your carbon, and then one, two, three oxygens rather than the normal two for a normal carboxylic acid. So, it turns out these things uh, form what are called epoxides uh, in step one, and then step two is going to open that epoxide. So kind of take a look at what's going on with the mechanism here. We're going to, again, start off with our alkene as the nucleophile, and we're going to come and attack this oxygen right here. So, but this bond here is going to come and attack back. And what's really facilitating that is that when this oxygen-oxygen bond breaks, it reforms a double bond between carbon and oxygen over here, and then this bond comes and makes a new bond of that hydrogen between the oxygen and the hydrogen as a result as well. And so, if we take a look at what's really forming here, we're forming a three-membered ring to oxygen. We call this an epoxide. We'll study these in greater detail in second semester. Uh, and then we're also going to form a carboxylic acid. So in this case, uh, this guy. And we don't really care about the carboxylic acid. The big thing was that we formed this epoxide. That's the major result of step one. And it's this epoxide that we're now going to react with H3O plus in step two. And it turns out the first thing we're going to do with H3O plus, in fact, we should draw H3O plus here. Is we're just going to do a proton transfer reaction and we are going to protonate that epoxide. So in this case, It'll end up looking like this guy right here. And then we're going to have a water molecule come and do backside attack. And again, anytime you attack a 3 mer drinker, attack it from the backside. And so in this case, it doesn't really matter which side we do in this one. They're equally substituted. But if there was a more substituted side, that's the side we'd end up attacking. So in this case, we'll attack there, open it up. So now we just have an OH on that side. That was the O of the epoxide. And on this side, we have an entire water molecule attached. And if you recall, we never end a reaction with an oxygen with three bonds and a positive charge. This thing is highly acidic. In this case, another water molecule is going to come and deprotonate. So we'll draw another water molecule in, our solvent. So and deprotonate to get our final product here. And so our final product here it's going to have an OH on both of these carbons. So, but you'll see here that if you examine the two carbons that are now sp3 hybridized, used to be sp2, they are both chiral centers, and that would not be a sufficient drawing. We need to show better stereochemistry than this. And so, being at anti-addition, we have to realize we're not going to get all four possible stereoisomers. And in this fact, due to symmetry, there would really only be three possible because one of them is a meso. Uh, but in this case, with it being an anti-addition, one OH is going to be on a wedge, and one's going to be on a dash, and you could do that either way. So the enantiomer also forms where the top one's on the dash and the bottom one's on the wedge. And this is anti-dihydroxylation.